My name is my name is Eric Kamen, and I'm a pinball repairer for 51 years, and I'm still doing it. If there's a problem, you can call me for service. So how did I meet Ray? So, and it was what, 2006? So Steve Kordak, I met him, and I didn't know who Ray was, but we started talking, and he had lots of experience designing, and so Steve wanted to show me, and Steve had seen, he made them all, and so I was like, who is Ray Gay? and the boards. He's very creative, and he has all the information, all the knowledge. And Steve said, oh, you're right. I have to tell you, and then Robert too. We explained about what was going on. He was happy to show me, and we got to see the presentation. Here's some pictures. But after he was speaking, he showed everything about the boards, and I was surprised because nobody all over the world knew that it was him. I was very proud of him because he's deaf, and he's the one that figured it out. And Steve said, thank you, thank you so very much. And he was proud to show it too, and then we were going to get ready to take a picture, and I was just sitting down, and Steve said, nope, nope, you get up here and take, get in the picture with us too. But he was proud of Ray. You're wonderful. Yeah. Do we have enough time? We have point. I don't know if anybody wants to say anything else. We can do Q and A. If you repeat the question, then I hope they can translate it into sign language so that they can respond. So after the release of the um, the um, the Gorgar table, what, what were some of the later uh, tables you worked on as well while you were still at um, Williams? Before the solid state machines, they had a group meeting discussing different ideas about how to try to set things up and they talked about different pinballs and what they would want to design and how to set everything up. So they had the game programmer that would talk about it and put designs together and think about it and the engineer would work on it and then give it to me and I would study it. I would look at the board and see exactly where everything was, where the sound should come from, where the speech should come from and put all the wiring together. And that was the first time when we were able to put everything together and then play the pinball. But understand, I couldn't hear, so I didn't really know about the sound being interrupted that way. So I looked at all the wiring, looked at how everything needed to be put together. And then I could look at the board and see like if it was actually right, where the CPU was, where everything's located. I could easily look at the problem and identify what needed to be done, how everything was connected and touching each other and make changes to everything and condense things together. But in that case, it was the analog and digital that were all condensed together for the Gorgar machine. But once I was able to separate that and, fin and fix that and send it back for them to make a different board and then reconfigure everything and then remount it, get rid of the old one, throw that one out. And then we were watching and hoping that it would not do the same thing. And then once you're able to play it, 
then you could hear the speech and you could hear the talking and it was really good. That was what was successful, was changing the analog and digital being condensed together. Oh, you were asking about the name of the games. Oh my gosh, there are so uh -huh. many. I couldn't even remember. There were so many that I worked on. There, I, it was impossible to remember that. Huh. But you know, my focus was on the boards and then the play field designs. And that was my responsibility was the designing and the boards. They would give it to me to connect everything after I had read the blueprints and put all the schematic together. And then I would be able to connect everything, put it all together and give it back to them to mount onto the machine. But understand sometimes the technology changed and then everything would become small. So things changed and I had to learn how to do things different. So then I would have to do it from memory. And then things changed, it became more exciting and kept adding new technology to things. Any other questions? Steve Ritchie designed Hyperball, released in 1981, which shot 80 balls per second and used different electronics. Did you work on that? Yes, I did. Understand that was the same. Sometimes you had to add like a smaller piece but all the boards were the same. Yep, I did. Yeah. Did you use PC board layout software at some point? Because you showed the manual layout of the tape. In the old times, that's when I used that black tape with the red tape and then the blue, and then we put it on the mylar sheet for many years, that's the way we did it. But it was after that that I was able to take up the computer-aided drafting classes, the CAD, that's whenever we added that and I was able to use that. And then we were finished using the tape and then we used that after the um, computer-aided drafting came about and we used that from then on. After Gorgar came out with uh, this breakthrough technology, were, were people trying to copy that? Were other companies trying to copy that? Did the industry become a little bit more competitive as a result? Well, they patented that so people couldn't copy it. So you know that we, we knew that we had something and people had to ask our permission to be able to use that be, um, with the speech since it was the first one. So it was patented. There's just so many. <laughs> There's just been so many over time. It's been so long. I can't even think. Oh gosh, I I just can't think of any. There are so many, you work together with a team, everybody works together, and then you add the computer and set everything up. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, 
before it was the first time, you know, the old time with all that tape and everything, and then technology has changed, and you have the computer-aided drafting, and everything's changed. Technology, technology has changed this process completely. It was much harder in the past, but that is the way we did it for a long time before the new technology changed, and now it's so much better. to con it, You have less of a difficult time putting everything together using all that tape, but you know you have to be patient when you're doing all that. Just like my work, when I'm fixing all those wires and everything, you have to be really patient because it's all kind of messed up inside there and you have to separate everything. But now you have the printout and it's so much easier with all that technology because you can print everything out with the CAD. So that's all, right? That's everything. I don't know. That's everything. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching our presentation. Hope you have a wonderful day here.